Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm happy to see you here. My name is Soy and I'm a UX designer at Google. As a UX designer, your portfolio is the most important asset and you would want it to be in its best possible shape. Starting from my last video, I've started a series called the six most important things to include in your UX portfolio, in which I'm going to do hand-holding tutorials on building a UX portfolio from scratch and to talk about how to hit those key points to impress interviewers. The tech job market is tough and I'm here to help. I would like to give away a free UX portfolio consultation in each of my videos to help fellow designers. You just need to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below to let me know that you are interested in getting this free UX portfolio consultation. A design process is important because it defines the quality of an end product. I've seen many UX case studies and the design process in many of them are a little bit template heavy. Maybe 6 out of 10 design process I've seen include UX research, creating personas, creating user journey map, design explorations, and user testing. I mean, it's fine if designers are able to showcase their design thinking by following through this process but oftentimes taking a template approach doesn't really help designers to highlight their strengths and stand out in a job interview. In my last episode 1 video, I shared tips for writing effective UX problem statements that will help curate a good story. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to present a design process that will make your personality shine in a job interview. And I'll talk about the other four portfolio key components and the best strategy to create a stellar case study in my following videos. On my channel, I'm dedicated to all things about UX job interviews and product design. I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you near your next job interview. If you want to get some career advice, do a mock interview, or just talk about career development in general, feel free to use the link down below to book a session with me. Everything starts with a reason. In the first phase, it's necessary to determine what exactly needs to be created and why. Who are the target audiences? Why do this product exist? You might want to work with your cross-functional partners to do a kick-up workshop or to write a high-level one-pager or PRD to align on high-level problems to solve key metrics and timelines. As UX designers, we are responsible for taking a user-centered approach to solve user problems. And research is a step that you wouldn't want to miss in your design process. Although it's unrealistic to use the full set of methods on every project, almost all projects would benefit from multiple research methods and from combining insights. There are two types of research, user research and market research. User research can take many forms, such as interviews, surveys, focus groups, and ethnographic studies. Market research looks at things like industry trends and competitive analysis. In my one ones with mentees, I learned that due to limited resources or tight project timelines, not all companies would give UX designers the opportunities to run extensive user research. And here's what you can do in those cases. I would recommend to leverage whatever available resources to learn more about target audiences and the market. As UX designers, we can actually do competitor analysis and read competitor product customer reviews to see what people think about similar products, what are some of the product strengths that we could reference, and what are some of the product weakness we should avoid when developing our own products. If your team work with a marketing team or marketing representatives, I highly recommend you to reach out to those marketing people to gather user insights and market analysis to inform next steps in your design process. As a matter of fact, sometimes marketing people might know more about target audiences and the market than user researchers from a business point of view. At some companies where there are no UX researchers, designers are actually responsible for leading UX research sessions. Research is a really big topic. Even within user research, there are quantitative and qualitative research methods. I'll talk more about what are the differences between those research methods, how to decide which method to use, and how to lead UXR sessions as designers in my future videos. UX design is not just about drawing. It also involves a lot of reasoning and data analysis. After doing research, designers taking all the information they gathered in the research stage and then start to translate users' needs into product and design needs. Designers would then start to create user personas, wireframes, user journey map, user flows in this phase. 
Like I mentioned before, it's unrealistic to use the full set of methods on every project. And if you show all the methods like uh, user persona, user journey map, and user flows in a case study without telling a cohesive stories of why all those methods are needed, it's going to make the case study look like cookie cutter. In my future videos, I'm going to introduce all these methods like what exactly is a persona, what is a user flow, what is a journey map, and also I would like to help you understand how to determine which method is the best one to use in your design process and how to just why you want to use those methods in your case study. On step 3, this is also the time designers start to think about problem statements. With all the user insights and product insights they gather from previous steps, designers should be able to write a high-level problem statement that outlines the target audience, the user problems, and product problems they are trying to solve. Feel free to reference the first episode in the six most important things to include in your UX portfolio series to learn more about how to make an effective UX problem statement. This is probably the core step in the design process. Once you have a good understanding of the users and a plan to move forward, it's time to sketch out some ideas for how users can interact with your interfaces. You would think about things like the overall layout, the information hierarchy, navigations, and specific components on the page. The key here is to think about what are the user problems and how to solve their problems along the user experience. What are some of the information users need to see in order to navigate easily? Where users might get stuck in the end-to-end -end journey? Once you have answers to these questions, you would be able to form a clear picture of what the interface should look like. I noticed that in many of the case studies, design explorations are missing, or some designers would show low fidelity wireframes or mid fi wireframes to represent design explorations. To be honest, it doesn't matter if you include low fi wireframes in your case study or not, but if doing low fi wireframes is a very critical part in your early design explorations, then for sure you would want to include it. But don't create low fi wireframes just for the sake of showing low fi wireframes in a case study. What design exploration truly means is exhausting all the possible options to create an optimal UX. So something that you really want to include in your case studies are a few promised UX options. Remember to talk about the pros and cons of each of the design options and also justify the rationale of why or why not going with certain design options. In some case studies, I only see final design marks and some lines connecting different marks to indicate user flows, but I couldn't find any rationales to justify design decisions. I would highly recommend you to talk about why you created the design in that way and what user problems you solved. Here's an example of justifying design rationale. Say you created two CTA options for a checkout page one is a primary CTA and the other one is a tax CTA. You went with the primary CTA option because it's important for users to know how to check out. A primary CTA has more visual prominence and users would be able to notice a primary CTA easier. This is just an example. You don't have to provide design rationales for each design details, but for critical design decisions like layouts and key component choices, you would want to let your audience know your design thinking behind those visuals. Before launch, it's important to test your product with real users. Usability testing helps identify areas for improvement before a product goes live. And here are a few ways you can test with real audiences before launching a product. You can create design prototypes and test them in unmoderated test-based usability testing. Send your prototype to reach a large number of target audiences, assign them tasks to complete in user testings, and gather user feedback on things you are curious about. You might want to give your usability testing participants some gift cards or cash as an appreciation for their help. You can also work with engineers to run experiments with multiple arms. Please be aware of the engineering resources and the time your team can allocate for running experiments. Uh, work with your PM and engineers to define an experiment plan and to make sure whatever design that's going to be implemented for the experiment are going to be the most promising ones. Don't include design options that are not going to work for sure because testing those options would waste your team's time. After aligning with your team on the testing candidates, your team could do soft launch of those options to a small amount of customers to see how they would react to a real product. The benefit of this experiment method is that the product is real, 
and the user data gathered are the most accurate. The trade-off is that the experiment method would cause way more engineering efforts than the prototyping method. After launch, the product, whether it's an app or a website, is not done yet. A design process is meant to be an ongoing cycle as users interact with and provide feedback on the product. As a designer, you might want to note down the opportunities for improvements along your design journey and then work with your team to scope in those improvement ideas into future roadmap and iterations. So this is everything I would like to share with you all today. Thank you so much for watching. If you think this video is helpful, please give it a thumb up. If you have any questions or any topics you're interested in, feel free to comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.